I just got to Bearskin Lake, a population of um, approximately 400 people and uh, about 50% of the population has been tested positive for COVID-19, including babies, children and elders. Uh, my name is Chief Lefty Cameron Arman, uh, Chief of Bearskin Lake First Nation. People are just, uh, their anxiety level is very high, like uh, very scary, because uh, we're battling and uh, going against the unknown. So many uncertain moments that we have, uh, I think uh, they want help. I think that's the message we want to send out to the government. We want boots on the ground right here in the community to accommodate these people. Like uh, negative people and positive people are living together. And uh, those that were once negative are now positive. And just getting each other sick, uh, living and cramped together in one place. Uh, my name is uh, Sheila Beardy. I am the, uh, the pandemic worker and I'm from Bearskin Lake. It is very stressful. We don't know what's happening. All the workers are very uh, burnt out, stressed out. I have elderly parents at home that they've been tested positive and there's nobody to look after them but I'm grateful the nurses go and check up on them once a day. My name is uh, Stuart Cameron Ottoman and I'm a member of this uh, First Nation, but presently I live in uh, Thunder Bay. We have a team of 12 that came up from Thunder Bay yesterday. We have identified so many homes that will be running out of wood here in a while. We all volunteered to come here. Um, we have family here and we have families that are positive and this is a very scary situation. Everybody that we meet, we do see their concerns. As I'm driving around, it's, it's like a ghost town. You don't see anyone other than the volunteers or the community members that have tested negative. People are isolating, uh, even as families, if there's positives and negatives in that family, because there's no places to isolate. It's messed up. Everybody knows me as West Nothing. I'm the health director in Bearskin. There's been a lack of government response. Um, I think we could have had a, a better outcome before if we had isolation centers, some help from uh, the government in, in terms of maybe portable portables, anything that could help us to isolate the people, the, even the positives and the negatives. It's an overcrowding issues that we have to deal with uh, in our houses, uh, with accommodations uh, that this compounds uh, uh, and makes a COVID uh, crisis even worse. That's, that's what we can do, is to help them out. We can't be in Thunder Bay, being in those uh, houses where you just turn the dial and we understand the needs that they have here and that's why we are here. After we are gone, that who is going to take over? As far as uh, when you consider the government's response or lack of response, we feel left out. We see uh, how the government responds in other areas, southern Ontario, other parts of the country. Here, there's nothing. Only our neighbors, the surrounding communities, uh, all of them that are close by have responded. They have raised donations, they have chartered planes to bring us supplies. And, this, and I'm talking about less than 30 people uh, serving uh, a community of 400 plus members in the community. And I thank uh, people that are listening, um, uh, that uh, surrounding First Nations that responded with their donations and monetary contributions to our community. Uh, my name is Katie Nothing from Bearskin Lake, Ontario. Yeah, we want to say thank you to all these uh, neighboring communities that have stepped up to help us.